we're back at the science cave and we're going to look at processes. Oh, as soon as I get on the layer, we're going to look at processes. Processes that lift air. That lift air. Well, you may ask, well, why are we looking at these? Well, you can't get clouds, which we seem to have enough here in Michigan during uh, November and December, unless air is lifted into the atmosphere. You got to remember, air cools as it's lifted in the atmosphere. We talked a little bit before about dew point. That's the point at which condensation takes place. And so we got to get that air up into the atmosphere. And there are four processes to do that. The first one, it's got kind of a fancy name for it, is orographic lifting. So orographic orographic lifting. When you talk about this, really you're talking about uh, air coming over mountains, which we don't have too much of that here in Michigan. But let's draw a mountain in here. And if you remember, in the continental U.S., the wind blows from, typically, from west to east. We're in what's called the prevailing west westerlies. So the wind is blowing in this direction. So when it hits a mountain range, the air is lifted. Now, as this air is lifted, it cools and clouds can form. So you can get some cloud formation on this side of the uh, of the mountains. Well, if you get cloud formation, you can also get rain. And so quite typically, and again, if you remember right, this is the windward. The windward side of the mountains, you can get the rain here. Uh, most mountain ranges, the rain it does fall on the on the windward side you know you get the grass growing you get the trees uh, you get good precipitation on here so as this air gets lifted it cools and condenses and you can get the precipitation going on well the problem on the other side if air when it comes down the mountain side air actually warms and the pre the moisture is already gone. Whatever water vapor was left is gone. So as the air warms, uh, there's no moisture left either. And you have this is this is dry on this side. And again, if you remember right, this is the leeward side. If we're talking about the Rocky Mountains. You know, you get out into here. You know, it's uh, pretty arid. You get into eastern Colorado, western uh, Nebraska, and so forth, it is arid. So, orographic lifting. Again, you want to get the air to move up into the atmosphere. Well, the other type we have is called frontal wedging. Frontal wedging. Let's see, wedging. Well, frontal wedging, let's see if I can find a nice blue here, is when a cold front meets a warm front. So this would be our cold front. Or I should say a cold air mass. So this is cold air. Again, the front is right where the two uh, meet. But again, you could think of it as a cold front. Cold air is pushing out the warm air. Well, cold air has higher density. Well, as this higher density cold air meets the warm air, what ends up happening, the warm air, so this is our warm air, The warm air actually rises over the cold. Warm air uh, is less dense. And it rises. Oh, 
over the cold air. And again, if you get this whole idea that as air rises, it can reach its dew point, you again can get cloud formation. And if you get cloud formation, you can get precipitation. So this is frontal wedging, when cold air pushes out really warm air. You see this quite often in Michigan during the summer, get some good thunderstorms. This cold air comes rushing in, this warm air rapidly rises, you get those nice cumulonimbus clouds, uh, you get the thunderstorms, and you know, sometimes possibly tornadoes. Well, the third one is called convergence. Convergence. Well, this is when two air masses converge or two um, winds converge. And the best example of this is uh, if you've ever been to Florida. If you get into Florida, you got the panhandle, the large panhandle coming down here along, along the coast here. And what you end up having, you got the Atlantic out here. You got the Atlantic. And over here, you've got the Gulf of Mexico. Well, what ends up happening, you do have these winds coming off the Atlantic and the Gulf, and they are sea winds, and they blow towards the land. Well, when things converge, think of an, uh, think of an automobile accident. When things two cars smack into each other, they converge. They can't go down, so they go up. So what you have here, as this air converges off the Atlantic from the uh, prevailing you know, uh, wind coming off the water on either side, you get this convergence, and the air goes up, and again, you can get some nice thunderstorms going on. Uh, you see, if you bed down in Florida, you see this inland all the time in the afternoon. Uh, or from 3 to 5 o'clock, you can get a good thunderstorm going on. But the beaches themselves, you know, they stay pretty clear. That is convergence. Well, the last one here is what is referred to as convective lifting. Convective Lifting. Well, let's say we got some land. This is the land. And we got the sun's energy. We, we talked about the sun's energy heating up the land. And how in the troposphere, as the energy hits, it's re radiated back up. Well, not everything absorbs energy at the same rate. So um, you're going to have this energy being released so this air is going to be warmer and it's going to rise well let's say this is some uh, let's say this is a uh, well we could talk about this being over sand or anything this energy starts to rise and as this air that has gained this energy starts to rise it's going to cool well and again, as you can probably guess, as it cools, it can condense and reach the dew point. These quite often, especially here in Michigan, are your, uh, you know, during the summer you get an, a pop-up shower in the afternoon. Uh, you might see those nice white cumulus clouds. Well, this is all convective lifting. Not all parts of the Earth's surface heat at the same rate. And that's why you just don't see these solid masses of clouds. You see those nice puffy ones. And if it gets strong enough, uh, enough moisture in the air, it rises high enough, you can get some precipitation. Well, I'll also uh, put a, uh, a PowerPoint on this, or maybe we'll even show a class with some examples of this. So uh, that's it for this one. And the next one we'll talk about is uh, adiabatic heating and cooling.